Good morning, beloveds. I'm a little extra sniffly. It's springtime. <clears throat> so, and I just sneezed myself silly. Okay. Um, Uh, I guess I should give you a heads up if you are what if you typically watch this live um, tomorrow will probably be much later. Um, I have an eye doctor appointment at 930 and so I figure probably for the less stress on me um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the eye doctor and then I will come back and do this uh, after. And then I have an eye doctor appointment in the after, or and I, then I have a doctor appointment in the afternoon. Uh, I took yes tomorrow off so that I could get some movement on some health challenges that I have. And the irony is that our title today is "I Want to Be Healthy." <laughs> so here we are. Um, it is April twenty twentieth. Uh, our title is "I Want to Be Healthy." Uh, the first quote is "The Lord is in." It's holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before them, before it. And that is Hubaku 20, 220. Uh, and then man, uh, let's see. People's life in reality is spiritual and mental. And until their thought is healed, no form of cure will be permanent. That is the science of mind. Page 190. The greatest irritant to most people is not the lack of money or status, but ill health. Nothing shines brightly if we do not feel well. The science of mind philosophy teaches that our thoughts control our body, that positive life-affirming attitudes are a distinct factor in all healing. I do not question this, but I also believe that we cannot simply ignore our bodies. Ernest Holm has said that our bodies are spirit compressed into form. Other writers have referred to them as congealed consciousness. But though we are ultimately spirit, we still need to take care of ourselves physically. Just as we check our thoughts for their appropriateness, let us be aware of our physical movements and the way they assist our bodies. Do we eat properly? Do we rest enough and play enough? Do we love the body we inhabit and delight in its upkeep or do we disparage it and wish it were different? In essence, all bodies are beautiful. If we want them, if we want them to be. Good health is a reflection of how we value our minds and body. <clears throat> minds and bodies. Infinite mind, inspire me. Infinite power expresses through me. Infinite life heals me and presents me as a true spiritual being. I take the responsibility for my good health. I value my body as the temple not made with hands. And I am attentive to its needs. Gratefully, I accept all that I have been given and live an appreciative life. And that is MS, which I believe is Margaret Stoltz, who is somebody I have heard of. So, yay. <laughs> um, so, I want to be healthy. And she nails it on the head when she says... Uh, that it, just as we check our thoughts for their appropriate appropriateness, let us be aware of our physical movements and the way they assist our bodies. We have a responsibility to take care of the, I like to call it a vehicle. Um, she quoted the temple not made with hands because this, this vehicle is how we express God in this world. This is how we bring God into material reality. Um, this is what allows us to, to go and do and to create and to live and to love and to do all of these amazing things. And everybody's body is different. Everybody's body is, you know, no two bodies are the same. <laughs> I mean, even twins have, you know, slight, identical twins have slight variations. Um, you know, you can share the same genetic DNA. You can be, you can share the same womb, you know, and all the conditions are the same. And if you are fraternal twins, you come out complete, you can come out completely different. Um, I've, I've known a couple of identical twins and a couple of fraternal twins. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, 
and they're they when they do research on twins to see you know the, the differences it matters what we do we talk about our thoughts and it is extremely important our state of mind is extremely important to our body um, because when our state of mind is not good it is harder to take care of our body you can ask anybody that has uh, tangled with depression um, when the depression is really bad you don't want to get out of bed you don't want to shower you don't want to eat you don't you know you don't want to do any of that and that's not taking care of this body um, so it, and ironically one of the things that can be very helpful for depression is to get out of bed to take a shower and to exercise because um, it stimulates stimulates a whole you know host of hormones that can be supported uh, but you don't want to you don't want to and I speak from experience I know I've been there and so um, when and sometimes when our mental health is struggling when our emotional health is struggling then focusing on taking care of our body is a place to start and one of the reasons the long reasons why I ended up in ministry in ministry why I went to ministerial school is because a hundred years ago when I was in my undergraduate degree working on my degree in anthropology I took a class on medical anthropology and one of the, the radical differences between um, Eastern care and Western care is the attitude of wholeness in Western it's almost completely focused on the body and it's almost completely focused on symptoms not necessarily root causes now when you go into Eastern they understand that to affect as Ernest says in the quote to affect complete and lasting healing they also have to take care of the mind and the soul um, we talk about watching the trend of our thoughts because the trend of our thoughts is going to affect how we take care of our body um, it affects what we eat there is documented research on people who have low serotonin they will crave carbs because carbs especially simple carbs ie sugar mimic serotonin the problem is is that with serotonin you're gonna have you know you're gonna have peaks and valleys you're gonna have that but carb peaks and valleys are much bigger so the peaks can be higher and the valleys are much lower and it's harder to recover um, it's harder to recover from the crashes so while there is a natural cycle to serotonin um, they will mimic they will try and mimic it with the carbs and I know what I'm talking about I, I have uh, I understand that in taking care of my mental health carbs can be can be the enemy um, but I have learned not to treat them as the enemy because then that just sets me up for a fight what I understand is that carbs are my friend in moderation and it also matters what kind of carbs so I gate keep my carbs you know it's like okay I'm gonna make this decision if I decide to have this carb which I know isn't particularly good for me then two things have to happen one I need to make sure that I'm in a good place mentally physically and emotionally and then I can have that carb but I also need to make sure that I partner that carb with something that will blunt its effect in my body ie protein so I had a mini cruller today which is a cake donut and drank a protein shake after <laughs> and a protein shake that had plenty of fiber so it's not and and so now I don't treat carbs as the enemy but I just understand you know I'm gonna partner you with something that's gonna make sure that you don't go crazy in my system so if I want to be healthy I have to get to know me very well and I have to make choices that in the long run are good it doesn't mean I can't have the donut it just means that I need to make choices about when and how so I want to be healthy and I I've never I need to go back and find this book it's H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K 
It's 2.20. Uh, Hubaku. The Lord is in the holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before the Lord. And then in the science of mind, and this is what I, I, I was quoting back to you about my anthropology class. Um, our life in reality is spiritual and mental. And until our thought is healed, no form of cure will be permanent. That's what I'm talking about. Mental, physical, and emotional. We got to take care of the mind, the body, and the spirit. If you want to be healthy, healthy, because when your body is not well, it's harder to have a positive outlook, but not impossible. And when your mind is not well, when you're, when it all is not well with your soul, it can take a toll on your body. There is a direct correlation between lowering the immune system and the raising of stress. There is a direct correlation between not getting enough uh, sleep and um, lowering your immune system. So, you know, there are choices that we make. Okay. So the greatest irritant to most people is not the lack of money uh, or status, but ill health. Ask anybody with a chronic illness. Just, yeah, trust me on that. <laughs> it's like all the money or status in the world is not going to fix that chronic illness. But a good attitude can go a long way. Uh, nothing shines brightly if we do not feel well. well. That's a darn truth. The science of mind philosophy teaches that our thoughts control our bodies. That positive, life-affirming attitudes are a distinct factor in all healing. Yeah, science of mind teaches that, but so does science. There is all kinds of interesting research on people's attitudes and how they um, heal uh, when they are having an experience of cancer. Okay? And it's not all the positive attitudes. It is about the strong, the strong emotions. Because sometimes people go in uh, into into that experience of cancer treatment um, angry, and that works just as well because it is a strong emotion. They go in there and they say, "This is not going to get me." All right, uh, I do not question this, but I also believe that we cannot simply ignore our bodies. Ernest Holmes has said that our bodies are spirit compressed into form, which is an interesting way of saying it. Other writers have referred to them as congealed consciousness. And I admit the word congealed makes me giggle. So there, there we are. But though we are ultimately spirit, we still need to take care of ourselves physically, which is why I'm going to see two doctors tomorrow. Just as we check our thoughts for their appropriateness, let us be aware of our physical movements and the way they assist our body. Okay, physical movements. Do we exercise? Do we eat right most of the time? I'm going to have the donut, but most of the time I'm not going to have the donut. <laughs> so it's the trend of your thoughts, okay? I'm not going to take... The, all sugar away from you. I'm just going to suggest that you figure out what your limit is. Do we eat properly? Do we rest enough? Oh, that was the argument my husband and I had yesterday. Uh, and then I like how she says, and play enough. Do we rest? And do we have fun? If we don't make time for some fun, you know, what's the point? Do we love the body we inhabit and delight in its upkeep? Delight in its upkeep. Or do we disparage it and wish it were different? In essence, all bodies are beautiful if we want them to be. Good health is a reflection of how we value our minds and bodies. So our treatment is, infinite mind inspires me. Infinite power expresses through me. Infinite life heals me and presents me as a true spiritual being. I take the responsibility for my good health. I value my body as the temple not made with hands. And I am attentive to its needs. Gratefully, I accept all that I have been given and live an appreciative life. So that's Margaret Stoltz. Okay. 
the mission today, should we choose to accept it? I'm going to use this line out of her treatment. I value, so the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to value our body as the temple not made with hands to and to be attentive to its needs. What are its needs? Does it need a nap? Does it need a snack? Does it need more food? Does it need a good night's sleep? Does it need to go play? Does it need to go for a walk? Does it need to go to the bathroom? How often do we think, oh, I really need to go to the bathroom? And then we don't. Be attentive to this body. It is made of spirit, by spirit, to allow you to go and do what is yours to do. And not everything is yours to do. So sometimes, some of us have bodies that are just never, like, this body is never going to run a marathon. Just not going to happen. It may not ever run that half marathon that I had set my goals on. We'll see. But it still gets out and it gets me doing what I need to do. And one of the things that I need to do is to finish up and go to work. So, um, because today is Wellness Wednesday and it's all about health. So, yeah, fantastic. That's the mission. And then... I'm going to give you the other one, which is to do something loving for yourself, to do something kind for yourself, to do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. All of those things that I just said about attending to the body, those are all loving, kind, compassionate things for yourself. Taking care of this body is a loving, kind, and compassionate thing for yourself. All right? Take three deep breaths. So, um, create that habit. All right, beloveds. I'm not going to do all the usual that all the rest of the spiel with that one. You know it. You know it. And today that's what we're talking about to take about taking care of yourself. But I am also going to say to make sure that you do something to engage your mind and your body today. It is one of the ways to take care of your body. So is drinking plenty of water. So is getting a face full of bright light first thing in the morning because it is about resetting those hormones. All of that is about taking care of this body. And opening the windows of the soul and allowing the breath of heaven to remind you that you live in heaven now, that's about taking care of the mind and the soul. All right, beloveds. Look for the good and praise it. And part of the good that you have is this body. The body that you walk around in, the body that lets you do. Take care of it. It was a gift. It was a gift to you from God. And I know some of us have bodies that we look at and go, how is this a gift? But you're here. You're living. You're doing. It's a gift. May not be the gift you thought you wanted, but that's life. All right, beloveds. Um, I am going to... In Suggest that you have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, an enchanting day, a magical day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. God has given you a whole lot of gifts. And sometimes you need to take that breath to stop, to look around and go, what are my gifts and how can I use them? Because you using your gifts is how you give gifts back to God. Okay. Um, catch us on the social medias. We are not going to have a soul session today uh, because what we are going to do is we are going to have two in May. We are going to have one on the first and one on the third uh, in Wednesday in May. So that uh, I got to find out if we've got a meeting tonight because <laughs> now I'm confused. <laughs> But it'll be really amazing. Uh, they lined up this uh, amazing minister uh, that Jesse's going to have a conversation with. So that'll be great. I encourage you to tune in for that. So if you want to know what's going on for sure and catch the, uh, catch the hot links that'll take you directly to whatever it is that we are doing, then um, that would be email info at creativelife.org. Um, he, the way he creates those emails, he puts hot links in there, click here and it'll take you right to whatever it is that you want to know about. Um, and then we are, we've got several other social medias. We are on Instagram, 
TikTok, that's Creative Life Spark. We are on YouTube. Um, and then I am on several of those. So we are Creative Life Spiritual Center or Creative Life Spark. I am the running Rev Ryan. Um, if you want to catch me on any of my social medias. So um, there we are. I'm going to get off and go and do for the rest of the days. First thing I'm going to do is mess with the, these cat paws that are right next to me. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, take care of yourself. Now, Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be on with you tomorrow, probably morning. I'm just not sure when. Um, I've made the decision that I'm going to get up, I'm going to go for my walk, and then I'm going to come back and go to my appointment, which is at 9.30. Um, and then I will do this after that appointment. I will do it between the doctor's appointments is what I'm going to do. All right, beloveds, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. I will see you next time.